back up here and make a big so let's get started with the prayer. Okay? And we're going to pray for this class. If you've got a request for somebody sick or whatever, we'll get to it at the end. But right now, we're going to just pray for this class. Single thought on here, but we'll totally all learn something tonight. Maybe I'll learn how to be talking on this. We don't know. So let's just, uh, let's just get started. Bow your heads and pray with you. Dear Lord, we you find you in Christ. Touch our minds to bring something from the Word of God. We worship you, Lord. We thank you that you we touch our spirits and our minds to go closer to you through your Word. That's just so we ask. Amen. Okay, so if you would, get your Bible out. Let me have some page turning. Okay, if all you've got is your phone, then you use your phone. Let's hear some page turning over to the 20th chapter of Exodus. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. 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 Well, the dust off so you can read the pages. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. You know where you're going. Okay. I'll read if you don't mind. And I'll just, uh, let's see where I'm going to start. I'll just start with the And God has made all these words saying, I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. So what's that? The first one, right? Thou shalt not make unto thee any greater man or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the waters under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and show mercy to thousands of them that love me and keep my commands. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that takes his name in vain. And then we have six, we have seven. We have eight, but we're going to stop there, because tonight we're going to talk about that third commandment. Thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. I think that's what most people think when they think about it. No, we just don't swear. No, it's not just that. It doesn't say, don't speak the Lord's name in vain. Don't take his name in vain. Mm -hmm. There's more to it in vain. So, so what does the word vain mean? Okay. English wise, you might say, well, empty, useless, boy, things like that. But this word translated vain has even more definitions. It's a denigrating term. Okay? It's diminishing the value of the Lord's name. He didn't want to do anything that does that. And in fact, this term, this, if God repeats himself, then it's always worth knowing. You know, God might say something one time. Okay. When he says something twice, so in Leviticus, if it's of any interest to you, the 19th chapter, 12th verse, it says, And you shall not swear by my name falsely, neither shall thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. Okay? So what does this and you see that word profane in the Bible often? What does to profane something mean? We're going to start getting our dictionary out here. I didn't realize it's not a word we use in common every day. I mean, profanity. Profanity comes from profane. To profane something is to make something common every day, ordinary. That's why profanity gets its name, because that was kind of the words the ordinary street person would use. They, they just say anything they wanted to. So when someone was using profanity, they were using just obviously words that, you know, defined people, refined people would use. The ordinary common. The same thing with vulgar. It simply just means common, ordinary, um, not everyday usage, but as in uh, the, 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 the uneducated on the street level. But anyway, that, so profane, you know, profane is anything. The name of God should be special at all times. In case you didn't hear that, the name of God should be special at all times. <laughs> you know, you don't want to ignore these. Welcome to class. Okay, so, uh, in fact, I, I, remember, I remember the first time I saw this and, and it struck me. The Jews are very careful about not speaking the name of God. You'll rarely hear, now, granted, maybe, 
depending on the liberal Jews, might be a little different. But the Orthodox type, you won't have any to worry about it, which is, I think, it was a convenient name for God. And in fact, I, I remember seeing this, as you can see this. I saw this in writing one time. Yes. G G. Yes. They won't even spell out the full word of God. It's very ingrained in Judaism to be careful about not violating this commandment. And Yahweh, what does Yahweh mean? Not Yeshua, Yahweh. It's where we get, I am that I am. If the word means like the all existing one. Remember in Psalms, the 98th Psalm says, God is from everlasting to everlasting. He's the only thing that's just always been. He's Yahweh. I am that I am. If you've heard the word Jehovah, that's the Latin version of Yahweh. Um, I think it's interesting. Those of you who are Harry Potter fans, you remember who was the one that said, uh, the one who shall not be named? Yeah. You remember that from Harry Potter? Law of Lord. Okay. So, uh, why is this commandment in the top ten? Thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. I mean, if all that meant was don't swear, sure, that could have been said anywhere. It doesn't sound all that great. But, but it, what you have to do is consider, look where it follows. You know, we've heard people talk about the Ten Commandments are basically the first four, God's relationship to you, and then the next six, your relationship to mankind. People starting with uh, 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 remember how you love the Father, okay? But it's it's number three on the list, and I do think it was deliberately put in there. First of all, God. It's God and only God, right? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And that means no other God to the Lord is G. And this time of year, football will be a God for some people. But whatever it is, you're not to have any beforehand. Yes, yeah, stay home. Staying home from church on Sunday to watch the NFL is violating the first commandment. <laughs> so that's going to be funny. But we're not going to make it out the phone. We're not going to make any images of God. Nothing in the lines of God. I mean, for one thing, you get to be like the idol worshippers, idol worshippers of paganism, who have wear statues and carvings out of the wood and what have you. So how can you make, I mean, I can see what God's saying is, how can you make anything representing when I fill all space? I am all there is from everlasting to everlasting. I am. So it would be foolish. Remember you said that scripture about the, uh, where are you going to put my throne? You know, the heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. What well, has to be a building that would contain you? <laughs> so we're not going to make any great images. And then it comes along this third. Don't take my name which was exploring. And I hope to bring that out a little more as we go through. Um, so, your name. It's your identity. Okay? Now, sometimes it doesn't capture everything. I mean, just call me Tim. doesn't say everything there is to say about me. But we all tend to think of our identity tied to our name. In fact, don't forget, Moses even asked, who do I tell him to say? I am that I am. Yahweh. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to throw this in here. We need to be kind of careful with our language, with how we use things. For example, I do not like euphemisms that people might use when we all know them well what you're saying. Okay? Um, you know, if you want to say, Tim, he's on the larger side. <laughs> Tim's fat. Okay? <laughs> well, I, I don't know if I can hear when some, anybody would say, God's strong. And you know what I'm saying without saying it. If you, I mean, we're all adults in here. We all know what's going on here. I don't like euphemisms like that. If someone, <laughs> if, if you remember my Aunt Eva, <clears throat> when she would get upset at something, I'll never forget it. She would just say, oh, foot. And she picked an innocent word like foot to just express her being upset at something. So uh, I know for me a lot of times I'll just say fiddlesticks. 
And, and if that comes from a bad let me know that I should have looked at that because it's becoming funny. In other words, if you just got to express verbally your frustration with something, try to fix something that's just innocuous, okay? Innocuous. That, that is not meant to say without saying. Because you're not fooling anybody, okay? Oh, and here's another one. How many people are guilty of this? Don't you think that's kind of diminishing God? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Remember all that? Mm-hmm. Okay. Just something to consider next time you're texting away. <laughs> Brother Tim? Yes. It's not only God that doesn't want his name diminished. You know, they they brought a suit uh, against Toyota. Yeah. And the owner, whose name was Toyota, yeah. he said, why would I put out a bad product? It's got my name That's on right. it. That's right. When your name, uh, what the name was it? It said, uh, the quality goes in before the name goes on. A lot of you guys have no idea what that is. Because they have been out of business for 30 years, maybe. But, but when I was your age, way back in the Stone Age, we had a product, a, a company called Zenith, who made a lot of electronics. And they advertised a lot, and that was their slogan. I don't even make notes of stuff you think you want to talk about. I don't even get notes of Okay. Even in today's world, people understand the value of a name. How many people recognize this? N-I-L. N-I-L. <laughs> What'd you think of that? <laughs> now, who can tell me what that stands for? Boy, you mean Neil and Boy. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it has nothing to do with the word, no. Latin word Neil, which means something. No? It's, and if you're into sports, you'll understand it, because it became a hot topic 10 years ago, roughly. And it still goes on today. It stands for this. Name, image, image Likeness. I don't know, I really care about sports you have here. Name, image, likeness. And in sports, what I was referring to is that lots of college, I, I don't think it necessarily started in the college ranks, but uh, it came to it down to it, where a lot of colleges would be making money off of advertising you as a player on the basketball or football team. And the players started saying, hey, I know we can't get paid, but you can't just use me for nothing. Can you think of the lawsuits that have been filed because people, I mean, if I decide to open a restaurant called Mike's and I put two, a big golden M out there, who do you think I want to hear from? That, that's an image related to McDonald's, okay? I couldn't open up, if I tried to open up a store that said Tim Star Mart, Tim Mart, go down to Tim Mart, save your money. No, I'll probably hear from them as well. Any, whenever you use a celebrity's name, He's got a piece of that, okay? If you use his image, his photo, his picture, whatever, he's got a piece of that. If you're going to use anything that points back towards him, like this, how you want to look at it, he's got a piece of that. So that happened in sports as well and became a big deal uh, in the sports world. Well, God doesn't want anything treated just any old way. Now, it hurt, it's interesting to me um, when you read the Old Testament verses in the New Testament how God comes across in the Old Testament as very formal. Now we know Jesus was the God of the Old Testament. But I think, to me, the Jesus, the Jesus in the Old Testament is a very formal thing. You're praying to God. You, you don't get to have a real personal connection with him. Outside of a handful of people, Abraham, Moses, there's only a don't few. Don't you think that was their fault? He wanted to. No, I don't think God was ready to reveal himself at an intimate level. That was yet to come. I mean, he did reveal himself and say, here's the laws. Okay? Here's what you've got to do to keep me happy to show that you're going to follow me. But it's so much different today when Jesus is very real. 
He lives inside of me. I know he lives inside of each and every one of you, too. He's a much more personal God. Because when you start getting real picky about having your name, and which means that that being picky about having your name, your image, and all that is depicted, carries over. We have to be just as careful today about how we think God, treat God, reverence Him. I mean, we're getting awfully personal, friendly, and, and, and I think Jesus wants to treat Him like a brother. But the God of the Old Testament is like a father, you know, and the father we had to accept. Um, Remember the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. They come to him, Master, teach us to pray. I mean, I was just, at least they had prayer as a way to connect me to God. But even when I read the Old Testament prayers, it always just seems so formal, and that's what I can think of. I mean, they didn't say Mr. God, but it, it strikes me that way, that they didn't see God as the down to our earth. That's why he was, that's why Jesus was Emmanuel, God with us. And we've got to handle him and hear him and learn of him and become personally connected with him as opposed to the Old Testament. And one thing I, I, I will pass this little tidbit along. Brother Ray said this a lot, and I agree with him. Whenever you go to God, when you come up here to the first door, you pray in your house, whenever you approach God, Repent. I can't believe anything I've done. I just said that. Guarantee you, you can stand to repent. If nothing else, we are an unholy, carnal creature coming before a holy God. And we want to clear the air. We don't want anything between us and God to reach. I know Paul told us to come boldly to the throne of grace, and we should. We should have confidence that God wants us to come to Him. But when we do, start off by repenting. Just like the Lord's Prayer, hallowed be thy name. We want to realize we want to see ourselves in the right way and humble ourselves before him. Uh, there are several passages in the Bible where God speaks to them and uses the phrase, my name. Uh, this is a place where I place my name. I, I can't think of all of them. I can get you a whole list of them, but that, that's just overkill. You see it used a lot, my name. But let us consider just a few of the places where his name was important because of how he, in other words, he was resting his authority on something. Since we're in the book of Exodus, in the chapter, in the 20th chapter, let's go over to the 24th verse. Uh, this is where he's describing how they're going to make the brazen altar. And they build it, you know, the temple. And it says, An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and shalt sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings and thy peace offerings, thy sheep and thy oxen, in all places where I record my name. I will come to thee and I will bless thee. You go out your backyard and you build all the earth and all the altars you want. You can put a big brass grate on it. And, and burn sheep up there if you want. But if God is, that sacrifice will mean nothing to God, it would only mean something if God put his name on it. Him putting his name on something is like him authorizing it, saying it's valid. You, if you recall, Brother Ray always like to use the excuse, I could walk up to a door and say, I'm from Sears here to repair your dishwasher. But if he wasn't hired by Sears, and he wasn't authorized by Sears to do it, then Sears isn't going to stand behind anything he does. You have to be called by God and authorized by God. That's why you got to be called by God to be, to be a preacher. Uh, what is it? Hebrews 4 it says, No man takes this honor to himself except him that was called by Aaron. Was God called out Aaron to be his high priest and said, Your uh, male offspring are going to succeed you in that office. And the same thing applies to the minister that you've got to be called to God and is to put his name on what you're doing. But then when he does, you better represent him right. And Brother Sowers always used to like to say, there are a lot of preachers out there lying on God. They don't realize they're doing maybe, but a lie is a lie, unfortunately. Let's see. So, where are we going? Okay. 
Matthew, you gave me King's chapter the 21st. You've heard this verse before. So, I mean, I'll just kind of go through these and you can make known the scripture. It says, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Any two or three people, that, that, that section, when you read it, keep in mind Jesus is talking about the church. And so, you've got to be comfortable. Matthew 18. Well, verse 20 is the one I read, but that whole section right there. He's talking about judgment. You've got to call of God in his name to get together to judge a matter. I can't just say, uh, Megan and Owen, come on up here. We're going to make a decision on this. Okay? Now, no, we've got to be called of God. we authorized to handle those matters. He's talking to the 12 disciples in particular, and not just any person. And those 12 were authorized. Who handle matters. If they found something on earth, they'd be bound in heaven. If they lose something, they lose to heaven. Same sort of thing. Uh, we all familiar with this church out of Ephesians chapter 3. For this cause I bow my knee unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the what? Whole family in heaven and earth is named. We've got G we have Jesus. We are of his heritage. Okay? Now, granted, I don't have Jesus stamped on me anywhere, but there's a part of me that would resemble Jesus. I mean, you, if me, Paul, and my daughter Claire stand up there, it's not hard to figure which friend does she seem to take the most after. Okay? Physically, she takes after me in a whole lot of ways, and even kind of mentally. But don't think Paul is an enemy. Claire's got a heart, though. She really does. I know she got that in her mother. Okay, so our, we, our offspring imitate us in many ways, in both appearance, the way they act, the way they think. I won't ask your parents to tell me what you think about your kids, but you know what I'm talking about. Isn't that a marvelous way you've got this idea? I'm going to have two individuals produce an offspring and all the right characteristics. There you go. So one parent's real stubborn, hey, look at this kid, be real stubborn. I won't pursue all that line, but you know what I mean. So there's a piece of me that resembles Jesus. I hope more of me, more of me begins to do just that. Uh, okay. Philippians 2, verse 10. That the name of Jesus, and here's how important his name is. His name, remember, God has no qualms with Jesus did all the work. Every day. Every day. God has no problem that, that Christ gets all the praise, all the glory, all the recognition. 21, and I'm going to make a son, and he gets it all. He's my firstborn, he's going to inherit it all. You know, metaphorically speaking. So, he gets everything. So, what he say here? The, the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Of things in heaven. So the angels bow at the name of Jesus. Of things in earth, including all of us, and things under the earth. And Paul was quoting there from Isaiah 45. So it's valid in both testaments. It's good in both testaments. It's good all the time. Jesus, though he's my brother, though I can think of him as my father, though he's my comforter, he's my close, I hope he be my close friend, though he can be my everything, he's also my king. And I cannot ever be so proud as it's not been the me. I don't want to ever get a thought like that, that I'm, eh, maybe Jesus was kind of like this. Well, okay, you, you might be able to say that, but really, we're kind of like this, okay? I, I need to always recognize where I stand with Jesus and uh, treat him as such. Do you want me to call us to go get a drink or something? No? Okay. These three more kind of. Okay, a name can represent authority. Okay, uh, kings have sent messengers. You know, you're going into the king's name to deliver a message or perform a function. So you are under the authority of that king. Well, let's look exactly at what a little authority means. For example, in Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter, the 21st. <coughs> I'm waiting for the rest of the class to catch up. 
Then Hananiah the prophet took the yoke from off of the prophet Jeremiah's neck and prayed. Why he was wearing a yoke, I don't know. Don't ask me. And Hananiah spoke in the presence of all the people, saying, Thus, now I know what he's saying, Thus saith the Lord. Listen up, folks. I got a word from God on high. Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord, Even so will I break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, from the neck of all nations within the space of two full years, and the prophet Jeremiah went his way. Probably think of it. Then the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the prophet, after that Hananiah the prophet had broken the yoke from the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, saying, So he wrote out to Jeremiah, Go and tell Hananiah, <laughs> saying, Thus saith the Lord, Thou hast broken the yokes of wood, but thou shalt make for them yokes of iron. You think this is going to be easy? <laughs> I mean, I've carried them all to battle for a reason. I ain't going to just stand back quickly with the yoke of It's going to be a yoke of iron. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have put a yoke of iron upon the neck of all these people. Remember, Nebuchadnezzar ruled Babylon, which was a. Ungodly. Yes. World Empire. Oh. Remember? So he's got a lot of kings with a yoke on them from Babylon. That they may serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. And they shall serve him, and I have given him the beasts of the field also. Then said the prophet Jeremiah unto Hananiah. So <laughs> he comes to Hananiah. It's a new story. Here's what the Lord has told me. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will cast thee, Hananiah, from off the face of the earth. This year thou shalt die, because thou hast taught rebellion against the Lord. I mean, it sounds like good news. Two years, it's all done. But you know, a false prophecy can put the wrong ideas in people. And whatever lesson God's trying to maybe teach somebody, they may not start getting that lesson. Oh, they they put the slap on the wrist and go away. Now, there's been a slap on the wrist. How long were they in Babylon? 70 years. 70 years. That's right. 70. In fact, I think it's in Jeremiah here later where he actually tells them it's going to be 70 years. That's a lot different from two. Okay. Uh, thou shalt, okay, uh, thou, uh, behold, I will cast thee out from the face of the earth this year, thou shalt die, because thou hast taught rebellion against the Lord. So Hannah, the prophet, died the same year in the seventh month. And since we were talking about the fifth month, the first verse, too much later. Yeah. Now, why in the world did he talk like that and do what he did? Well, it says he was the son of a father. Maybe he's trying to take a name from himself. So, you know, he was after, I think he just got the boost and don't need them. And maybe, and maybe he thought through it and said, it's a little bit of a How can you assure God's wisdom. You know, there's a place later in Jeremiah uh, where God told them, listen, don't fight this. It's going to happen. Just go there, build houses, plant things. Learn to live in Babylon, because you're going to be there a while, okay? And Hannah and I had no idea. We didn't know that. And that is God's plan. That's what I'm going to do to Jerusalem, to Jews, so they can learn that they got to, they need to lean on me. So here Hannah and I spoke in the name of the Lord and spoke wrong. And I, I don't think it's attitude. I think it's attitude is what they had most of the trouble. So be aware of that. If you're going to speak for God, make sure you have the authority to do so. Because if you recall in the chapter in the book of Acts, when Peter and John came to, to the gate beautiful and found the lame man there begging for alms, what did they tell him? No more go thou I am. But in the name of the Lord, they invoked the authority of the Lord because they had the they had the authority to invoke the authority. Rise up and walk. Okay. So, let's look at it this way. What, embar what can embarrass your family most? Somebody in your family. I mean, any stupid thing I do, you think that embarrasses uh, the family, the, the royals over in England? No. But Diane was embarrassing them when she did. If Charles and Kate do something stupid, it embarrasses them. 
uh, Henry and maybe Ellen, they decided to walk on their own. I'm sure it was a little bit embarrassing. So what embarrasses the family most is the actions of people in the family. We're in the family of God. We, we need to always keep in mind, will this reflect good or bad on the world? And yes, the world loves to exploit that point of view. Call yourself a Christian, you do stuff and stuff. I mean, you can't stop all the tricks. So, you know, I wouldn't worry about that. But if you know within yourself, I'm doing the right thing, God will back it up. You're his child. Somebody tries to falsely attack Larry, you know, oh, that's why. No. If she does something embarrassing, I'll have to tell her. And try to explain to her why. So we always want to keep in mind, we are part of God's family. And if he's going to be embarrassed by something, it could be what we say or do or even think. Okay. Uh, there, there is a proverb that I think uh, kind of fits with this. <laughs> it's in the 14th chapter. And he's heard this. Righteousness exalted as a nation, but a sin is a reproach to any people. I think you can turn around and say, righteousness exalted as God. God is pleased when we're living righteously. When we are saying, I'm going to deliberately do the right thing. But when I commit sin, it's a reproach on him. Maybe you need to think, think about that sometimes. Whenever you know that you're in a situation that maybe you may act foolishly or do something you shouldn't or even tempted to, just ask yourself, what does this do? How does God, how does the Lord look? Okay. He knows we're weak. He knows, uh, I think there's one of the uh, Proverbs that talks about the Lord pitted his children because he knows our frame is dust. And that does sound like it's kind of an out. Hey, Lord, you made me this way, okay? But, but he, he also said, yes, I did. And therefore, I understood why you failed over and over and over again. But then I sent you this comfort that is there, leaning on it as brother I would say so often, lean heavy on the Holy Ghost. And we have to. Our frame is just. Our frame, our very nature, I don't like to say our, our nature is sinful. I, I would put it this way. Our nature is selfish. We are just a selfish creature. We want what we want. Okay? And too often, it takes sin for us to satisfy what we want. And the Lord knows it. And he said, let me send you this comfort, this parapetos. You've heard people talk about the Greek uh, parapetos. One sent along to help. Use that helper to therefore not put yourself in that position. And therefore, I don't like to say, well, I don't like to say, you can shame on the Lord. Well, technically, it might be right. It sounds so harsh. But you know, maybe it's good sometimes to really see sin for what it is. Okay? Uh, we don't want to get to where sins are just, you know, little faults here, little shortcomings here. Because James told us, you break one law, you have broken them all. Okay? Sin needs to be, S I N, needs, needs to come at you in giant capital letters. Never let it be small case. Always let it be, this is what I'm trying to avoid. And I know, now, by the way, if you're not saved and born again, you're probably thinking, this guy's nuts, thinking we never have to sin. Then I'm nuts. Because Jesus made a way so we would never have to sin. So, I don't know who he's not. I'm sorry about that embarrassing and discouraging thing. But what if it's the opposite? What happens when you are doing what pleases? You are living righteously. What did John see on Mount Zion? He saw 144,000. Following the Lamb wherever he went. And what was the state that was about this 144? Why did John happen to notice that? I mean, granted, here's a Lamb on Mount Zion, he's got a crowd around him. But what stood out? They had their father's name. And I, I suspect they actually did it in his vision. I mean, otherwise I wouldn't know the right, you know. But it tells you so much. It's such a telling tale. My father means so much to me. Boom. I'm Jesus. And I'm going to follow that land wherever he takes me. 
and I knew what he asked me to do because he only has my good at heart. So, names have meaning. And we've seen names in the Bible, and they've told us what they meant and so forth. Like we always told about the name well. The uh, <clears throat> was the prophecy in Isaiah? Uh, his name should be called Emmanuel, and Emmanuel means God with us. And you already know that God told Moses, I am Yahweh, I am that I am, okay? Well, the Bible is chock full of names of God that tell us more about his character. And I decided to write a few of them down. I, I don't know how many there are. One place talked about there's 21 names of God. One place talked about there's 600 names of God. I don't know how many names of God. I don't think he would. But here's some of the ones. Oh, no, I talked about Yahweh. By the way, Yahweh is the name he used the most in the Old Testament referring to God. Then there is Elohim. In the beginning, God, Elohim. And as you recall, one of the things we were going to point out is that's a plural word. Let us make that as an answer. Okay. The first of these, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace. Jehovah Sabbath, Sabbath, the Lord of Hosts, I think it's more like Sabbath also. Ah, I'm not Jewish. The Lord of Hosts. El Shaddai, all sufficient. El Elyon, the Most High God. In other words, you'll find these names, particularly in the Old Testament, and that was the name that God inspired the writer to write down. He didn't always just pick any old name. God wanted him to use one of these because. It tells us more about what he is. His attitude, his, the way he feels about us. Uh, I don't know, I don't a lot. It's in the East Lord and Master. Jehovah Nisi. The Lord, my banner, my miracle. Jehovah Roth. The Lord, my shepherd. In fact, that you want to find rest, you just read that song. The Lord is my shepherd. Jehovah Rapha. The Lord who heals. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is sick. Jehovah sick can you? Or you can get in that body. The Lord our righteousness. Jehovah Mekhogishim. The Lord who sanctifies you. El Olam, the everlasting God, and El Kana, which simply means just. He gives you their next to says, I'm just God. That's where the Lord shows up. So God that we learn a lot about God just from his name and how it's used. Uh, <laughs> if you were to turn with me to 1 Samuel, the 25th chapter, Right thing. I don't know, maybe it was a nickname, you know. 
and then it might be something else, and everybody just call him Nabal, because he clearly acted as a fool. Uh, Nabal is a name, and folly is with him. But I, my handmaid, saw not the young man of my Lord, whom thou didst send. So she is interceding real quick. So you see, names carry meanings, and maybe sometimes you get a nickname, you know, when we call people lucky, and you can imagine all kinds of other things. So that, that's just a, an example of how the name. So we come over our list. Um, get it down there so you can't hear it only because it's in the so, one thing I was, I was fascinated by is you will, if you go searching on the, just for the phrase, my name, you just look at how many times the word my name, that God said, I will do this for my name's sake, and, and all these various things. It's like in the Bible over a hundred times, and the vast majority are talking about God or his son Jesus, even in the New Testament. And in the Psalms, we're referred to my name. Here's what he said in the Psalms. I'm going to boil down what the Psalm comes to do. Honor his name. Sing praises to his name. Perform acts in his name. Rejoice and worship his name. Like Paul said, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And I'm going to wrap it up with this one of my favorite verses in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. Behold, what man of love. We can't put it on a scale. What kind of love God had to say? He's poor, pitiful, carnal, flesh bound, selfish, creatures. And he said, When you make yourself, yes, I made it that way, and you can do it too. You can either live that life and just live it out and die and long short, or you can turn to me, and I will give you the joy. That come from serving me. Behold, a man of love, the Father has a silver cross. That we should be called, now we've got a name. We're called sons of God. We carry that name. I can proudly, proudly proclaim to anyone I am a son of God with all its rights and all its responsibilities to come with it. I'm going to stop there. Any questions on the name of God? I'm sure I can't answer. Okay. Let's go to prayer now for those who have other needs besides this class. Do you have any other questions? Uh, so, who's sick? I can tell you, Sister Beard needs prayer. One of our hospital came here. She couldn't make it tonight. So, anyone else? Yes, sir. Brother Tyrone has COVID. Brother Tyrone has COVID. Yeah, all the guy has COVID. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, a fire the fire. Anyone else? Hi. Hi. Sister. Oh, Brother Craig? Yes. Brother. Also, we can have a lot of chest pains. I think it's anxiety, but you know. Brother Craig, you're spreading head to toe. Please remember Paula. She woke up this morning with a, a skin reaction. She's been all slapping herself and all kinds of stuff. Yes, ma'am. Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Uh, Sister Karen is going through an ordeal with her mom being really sick. So, yeah. Karen Clover is. And her mother. Uh, Sister Debbie DeVore. Sister Debbie DeVore or her parents. The Wallander family. Wallander family. Yeah. Uh, my sister had surgery a couple months ago, and she's not doing good. We don't know if it's from that, but she's increasingly getting worse and passing out. She passed out three or four times. And Brother Isaac's sister. Anything else? Well, let's stand and pray and we'll be dismissed. Heavenly Father, God, 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 Heavenly and I'm sure, Lord, that there's many, Lord, that we have neglected to mention. But, Lord, I know it. You know, Lord, those that need you to know. You know, I'm touching you know, every one. We ask in the name of Jesus, in your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All of this? Yeah. Oh, okay. There will be a men's meeting.
meeting. Okay, there are all you males out there with the Y chromosome. There's going to be a meeting Sunday, January 28th. So that's a week from this coming Sunday. At 9 a.m. at the Best Western at 4110 Dixie Highway. So it's just north of the Boston. Uh, Brother Tim would like all the men to come that possibly can, younger men as well. We will have breakfast, uh, breakfast buffet at 9 a.m. in the breakfast area, and that alone is for the company. Then a meeting afterward, we will discuss topics and questions. And then, starting the first Wednesday in February, there will be a Bible study on the first and third Wednesdays of the month. And then the rest will be regular services. We will try to send a, uh, prior to each class, they will try to tell you what the topic is so you can pray upon it and do a little study of your own and come in and be prepared to ask some tough questions. I, I like that with softballs tonight. And I appreciate it. But come prepared to learn even more. Is that covered? Okay.